Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to this Frame Quilting Friday video. I've received lots of questions about pantograph quilting over the last few weeks. So in this video, I'm gonna answer those questions and try to break down how these designs work and why I think they're so awesome, why I think they're worth learning how to stitch on your long arm. So the first thing to understand is the pantograph printing. Uh, it is continuous line, and whenever you pick up a pantograph from leahday.com, it is printed on a 12 foot long piece of paper. <laughs> very, very, very long. And the reason is that's how long long arm frames can come. You can get a 10 foot frame with a two foot extension uh, in this continuum frame. So you really wanna have the pantograph be as long as the frame, if not a little bit longer. So that way, if you have your frame set up full length, uh, then your pantograph's gonna cover the full length so you could quilt a quilt fully from edge to edge with that design. Uh, now, the design itself is also special. It's called continuous line, which means that you have the shapes in the design and the design part is this part in the center. That's what you stitch. And that is continuous line, meaning it repeats over and over and over continuously. Uh, and you can't usually tell where it starts and stops, you know, where that design begins and ends. Although with something like this daisy flow design, it's kind of obvious, you know, there's the shape and then it repeats again. Uh, so the continuous aspect is really important because that ensures that you get a nice consistent design through your entire quilt. So what is the main advantage of using a pantograph? Why would you want to invest in pantographs and uh, the rear handlebars on your machine and a laser light too? You're gonna need all three things uh, as well as a tabletop behind your machine. Some long arm frames do not come with a tabletop at the back. Uh, so that might be an extra accessory that you need to pick up too. So why would you wanna get into this and learn how to do pantographs? The main reason is that beautiful, consistent design. When you're first starting out free motion quilting uh, and quilting on a long arm is a form of free motion quilting, it can be hard to think of the design. Uh, it's uh, kind of like writing your name in cursive and that honestly would be probably a pretty good design to start with, just your name in cursive and stitch that all over a quilt because the reason is you know how that design works. You know those loops and connections and it's continuous line, meaning there's no breaks in it. Uh, so that's just one suggestion, you know, cover a quilt with your name or your name with lots of loops too, because that is also, as long as you're not breaking thread uh, and you're keeping the design going, then you're gonna cover your quilt fairly consistently with that design. But here's the thing, when you're first getting started, you're thinking about a lot of things. You're moving the machine, uh, you're looking at the quilt, you might be kind of obsessing about the quilting design or some mistake that you saw in the piecing, uh, and you're hearing the machine running too, and it can all be pretty overwhelming. And thinking of the design is that extra, that, that extra thing that sometimes it's really nice if that's taken care of for you and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so that's what the pantograph does for you. It basically takes care of the design so that you don't have to sit there and go, I'm stitching paisleys or daisies. I need to stitch a circle and then I need to bounce around it and then I need to go to the next one and I need to stitch a circle and then bounce around it. You're not having to work through that complicated process. You're just looking at the pattern down on your table and matching that up with your laser light and steering the machine. So you can really focus on your physical body moving the machine slowly, hearing it stitch out and getting used to hearing a healthy sound of your machine running. And then if you're having any sort of stitch issues, tension troubles, or you're just learning the basics, then that's a good way to get started because you're not having to focus so much so hard on the design. And another nice bonus is, if the pantograph has a nice consistent stitch, uh, nice even spacing, then that guarantees that your quilt is gonna finish up consistently quilted, it's gonna be nice and even, and it's gonna feel nice and soft if the design is open. So it kind of just helps you be able to quilt with less intense focus and a little bit more, hopefully it helps you to relax a little bit as you're beginning quilting. I really love how this curvy chevron design has turned out on my tree of life quilt 
because this is a quilt that I could have quilted in a much more complex way, but I didn't really have time. And this is the other advantage of a pantograph is it saves you time. You can just quilt those rows and you really want to quilt the maximum size of row as will fit on your frame and on your machine. So that way you don't have to advance the quilt as much. You can advance it fewer times, which is less time fiddling with the quilt and more time quilting. So the advantage here is I didn't have to think about it quite so much. I was able to quilt it consistently and quilt it quickly. Uh, Dad and I have both been working on this quilt and we knocked it out together in about four hours quilting time. And I know if I picked a more complex design or, you know, if I had quilted it freehand, it might've gone a little bit quicker, but it wouldn't have been as consistently quilted. And I like this look. It covers the quilt with one single design. This is gonna be a couch quilt. So this is absolutely perfect for what I plan to use it for. Now, if I wanted to take this quilt and put it in a show, it probably wouldn't be the best choice because it's too simply quilted. And a quilt judge would look at this and say, well, you, you didn't accent the piecing. You didn't pay attention to the piecing. The quilting doesn't uh, complement the overall quilting design, uh, the overall piece to quilt design. So it wouldn't be a good choice for show quilting, but it certainly is a great choice for bed quilting, for quilting for a baby quilt, for quilting for a throw quilt on the couch, anything where a quilt is gonna be used heavily, you're gonna need to wash it a lot, and you want that quilting to be in there, to be stable, uh, to secure those layers really nicely, but you don't wanna have to really fuss with it and do a lot of travel stitching or stitching in the ditch or anything super intense. So a lot of those advantages of pantograph quilting, and this is the thing, it's not for every single quilt, and it's not for every single project, but for those projects that you're really wanting to get done with quickly, and especially when you're wanting to relax into the quilting process and just get the hang of steering your machine, I think pantograph quilting is a really great choice. So I'm gonna click on the machine and do some stitching on this curvy chevron design. I shared a video of it last week. I made a mistake, well, Dad and I kind of made a mistake together. We moved the laser light. So last week I troubleshot and got the design back on track. I got the laser moved back on track. And so this week, I just wanted to show you how it works, how this design looks on the quilt. And this is the last row of this quilt. It is almost done. So let's stitch it together and learn a little bit more about pantographs. So I'm here on this last row and stitching this pretty curvy chevron design. I absolutely love this. And I think this is a great choice for any quilt where you just want a little bit more movement. You want to add some nice soft lines. So any quilt that has a lot of straight line, sharp angle piecing, a lot of half square triangles, quarter square triangles, anything like that, I think is going to be a great choice for this design because the curves really soften it up and add that nice flowing movement. And this looks like, almost like fern fronds to me. So that's why I chose it for this tree of life quilt because I thought it kind of looked like a, you know, tree leaves. I thought it worked. And I really like it in this lime green thread. I think picking a thread color that contrasts, especially when you're doing something like a pantograph design is definitely open to you. And you should contrast because number one, you can see what you're doing. You can really see that design and see that pretty texture. And then it also really makes your quilting pop. So, and it, I, don't, I don't personally think that that distracts from the quilt itself. I chose a very light green color and it mostly contrasts uh, very subtly over the white sections, the background, and then it contrasts depending on the color of green. Some of the greens it really blends in with and some of the greens it really pops. So I really love that. And I love contrasting threads so you can really see what you're doing too. So don't be afraid of that. The nice thing is because this is so consistent, you can see I'm following the design with the laser light. And even if I get off just a little bit, it's not a big deal. And it's not even noticeable in the design. Like if I extend a point a little bit one way or the other, that's not a big deal. And that's certainly not anything that you need to rip out. I do try and follow the design just as closely as I possibly can. Because if there's a mistake, if something happens, and let's say my laser light gets bumped like it did last week, then having that design stitched accurately 
And knowing that I can go back and line it up with one of these points, for example, that really helps. Another thing that really helps is to warm up your body a little bit before you get going. So I did a, a good bit of quilting. I did a little tension test on the side of the quilt just to make sure that my tension was looking good. Anytime I take a few, break, two, few days break off of the machine and I'm not in here, I always run a tension test just to be sure things are back on track and nothing's gotten weird while I've been away. And then once I felt warmed up and you know stitched a little bit on the side, then I just started quilting and it might be a little bit wobbly for the first row, but then by the second row, I'm really guiding the machine smoothly and able to follow that line. And I would say this is definitely a skill. Uh, the more I do this, the more I follow the line and quilt from the back of the machine, the better I'm noticing I'm getting at it, uh, the better I'm following that line. So I think just like everything with quilting, this is a skill thing. You might not be perfect at it for your first quilt, but give it two or three tries and I promise you, you're gonna see a huge improvement. Okay, so I'm right here at the edge. I'm gonna finish up these last few lines. And I always like to be real careful here right on the edge of the quilt, because I don't want that to go weird or wonky. I'm gonna stitch that down. And then I'm gonna sneak in here with that last little fern frond, curvy chevron shape. I'm gonna do the same thing, smooth that out stitch straight up and you can see I am right on the edge of this quilt. I gotta be careful not to stitch into my leader cloth. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm gonna swing up and get that little tail stitched in there too. So there we go. That is a beautiful curvy chevron design. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about quilting with pantographs and you're excited about giving this a try. You can find a free pantograph quilting guidebook at my website, leahday.com panto. This is one of those things that's just a little bit trickier than I expected to get into to get the pantograph down on the table and taped down securely and square and straight with your quilt. Uh, so I did the whole guidebook. Uh, it's about 24 pages long. It's gonna guide you through the entire process step by step. And on that page, you can also find the six pantograph designs I have published so far. So come and check that out at leahday.com slash panto. Until next time, Let's go quilt.